Good morning, First Church. Nice rowdy crowd this morning. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome everybody here to First Church. We are a community of faith based on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Our faith is 2,000 years old, but our thinking is not. So no matter where you are in your faith journey, regardless of your age, race, sexual orientation, gender, or any other box society has managed to put you in, you are welcome and accepted here at First Church. I have a number of announcements this morning. And in your order of worship, you'll see a green sheet that looks like this. Um, you can take those home with you today, please. And that has further information about the announcements and contact information and all that kind of stuff. This morning, we're holding a new members class in Anthony Lounge. Um, it's a little lunch get together. And if you're interested in finding out more about First Church, or if you're interested in becoming a member, um, you can go to that meeting and your questions will be answered and all your information will be given to you. So if you're interested in becoming a member, 12 o'clock today in Anthony Lounge will be a lunch. Can I have the ushers hand out the Ritual of Friendship books, please? If everybody would sign in and pass it down, that would be great. Ushers, can we get you to hand out the Ritual of Friendship books, please? Yes, yeah, we all need it together. Just so bring people in. Okay, with the elections just around the corner, it's very important for all of us to be exercising our right to vote. It's a privilege that we all have, and it's really important for us to be sure to be sending people to Washington and to the State House who have the correct vision for everybody and um, have the opportunity to vote. And uh, Jane McNamara will be over in Pilgrim Hall after the service this morning. I'm trying to see if I see her here yet. Oh, she's not coming. Okay. Well, then we will skip that. But anyway, in the next couple of weeks, she will be there, and you'll be able to sign up to vote, get voter information, and also to get uh, early voting ballots if you're interested in those. SAGES, which is our group for the retired and those who wish they were retired, will be meeting this Wednesday, July 11th at 10 a.m. in Anthony Lounge. Um, there'll be a great potluck, and Pastor Judy will be discussing the Civil War at that time. Please attend. Um, we also have the summer film series going on. The film series began, but we have some upcoming movies, Casablanca, Sunset Boulevard, on the waterfront, and the dates for all that are also on the green sheet. So be sure to check with that. Um, we have some sad news. Jerry Anderson, who's a beloved member of this church for a number of years, has died on July 4th um, in Minnesota. So you can contact Beverly Cooper for more information about that. She's getting the information um, regarding his death and uh, the services that are planned. As we um, prepare for our transition period, many of you know that Pastor Steve, well, the regulars here know Pastor Steve is gone, and we're entering a transition period which will last for a year to a year and a half, where we reevaluate our congregation and what's going on and uh, start a search for our new settled pastor. Well, our interim minister will be starting here on August 5th. It's Reverend Wally Kiroiwa. There's information about him in the newsletter where you can uh, find out a little more about him. And our transition team will be meeting this Tuesday with him to kind of map out the strategy as to what will be going on going forward. Um, so mark on your calendar August 5th. That is the day that he will begin here at First Church with us. Um, we will have a meet and greet. We'll give you a little more information about that in the coming weeks. And that'll be an opportunity for everybody to meet Pastor Wally. And also bring your friends and people maybe who haven't been here for a while. It'll be a great opportunity to bring them back to the church and uh, start this new beginning with all of us. Do we have anybody who's here for the first time today? We have a little gift. If you're here for the first time, could you raise your hands? Okay, we have somebody back here. Just keep your hands up for a minute while our ushers get the gifts out to you. Great. Do we have any other announcements? Yes. Oh, we have another announcement. Okay. I'm just following, I'm just following up what George told you. This will be in the narthex from now on, and after services, I'm selling coffee, so it'll be over by me. And this tells you a little bit about Wally, and it is so exciting. As you read his qualifications, it's something that there is no doubt our search team did a fabulous job. So if you'd like to read this, please come on over to Pilgrim Hall after the search. Okay, do we have any other announcements? 
Okay, then let us worship God together. Will you please join with me the unison century prayer? Still speaking God, do not let us be afraid of the hard questions, but rather let us fear precast answers. When at last we have sharpened our questions to the keenest point, let those same questions reveal to us as faith deeper and worse and higher than our imagination. Amen. Will you please join with me on our invitation to worship from Psalm 48? Please stand if you are able. <clears throat> Great is our God, and greatly to be praised in the streets of the eternal city of light. We are delighted in your love, O oh God. Just as your name is known everywhere, so praise is sung to the ends of the earth. Let the daughters of faith celebrate your saving justice for all. Let the sons of faith be glad. Tell the next generation that God is very much alive. Come, let us worship God. Please turn to hymn number 26, and we will sing verses 1 through 4.
streams from the hills it descends to the plain and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Please be seated. Good morning, First Church. Will you join me now in our responsive prayer of confession, followed by the Lord's Prayer? And as is the tradition at this church, when we come to the Lord's Prayer, will you please join hands with someone next to you? Keeper of our lives, you know the hardness and gentleness of human hearts. Through the storms of life that bring suffering and fear, joy and laughter, Teach us to turn to you for all we need so that we may be a loving support for others in need. Grant us the the courage and strength to be the people we long to be. Remind us daily of your unconditional love for all that you have done to others and to ourselves. In all this we ask in the words that Jesus taught us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us be in silence, and ponder the week that is behind us. If there is anything that we said or did or forgot to say or do that we regret, let us confess it now to God in our hearts. Let us be in silence. My friends, Jesus has told us, do not be afraid, little flock, for God has given you the kingdom of heaven. Here in this moment and in this place, the spirit of gentleness moves in our midst. Forgiveness, mercy, hope, and love are the gifts of God freely and unconditionally given to each and every one of us every day of our lives. The Apostle Paul tells us nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No longer lost, we have found our way home, surrounded by God's peace, by God's grace, and by God's love. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. And now as people of Christ and forgiven by God, let us share a moment of passing the peace. The peace of Christ be with you.
I guess I am. <laughs> I thought David was up, but it's me. This is a reading from the book of Mark, chapter 6. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He began to send them out two by two and give them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you visit a, enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. The disciples went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now, a word for the children. Will the children come forward? Time to shine. Come on. <coughs> Have a seat. Well, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to go to Flagstaff for a couple of days to get out of the heat. And... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I brought my suitcase so I could show you what I'm packing, all right? Oh, I, got, I got a lot of stuff in here. You know, it may be kind of cold in Flagstaff, so I brought my jacket. <laughs> it's a Diamondbacks jacket. And I thought I might want to read something while I was there, you know. So I brought one of my smaller Bibles. <laughs> it's got the Apocrypha. <laughs> and I like to cook, so I'm taking, the, I'm taking my favorite spatula, and I'm taking the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised what you can do with the toaster. <laughs> and, and then I thought I'd bring one of my very best friends. This is my teddy bear, Happy. Um, um, Pastor Judy? Yeah? Um, the reading that you said earlier today talked about that when you go places, Jesus talked about just taking the clothes on your back and your sandal. You don't need to bring a bag and your toaster <laughs> and a fleece jacket or your iPod or your Xbox or you know, your Game Boy. You don't need to bring any of that. Everything you need is already inside of you. Everything, God's love is oh. all you need to bring with you. Oh, I get it. We're already packed full. Absolutely. We're packed full of God's love. Let's all get up, go out, and share it with everybody. Will Have you pray class. with me? I'll say a line and then you can repeat it. Wait a minute, Anthony. We're going to pray. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for packing us full of your love every single day. Thank, Thank you, you for, for packing, packing us full of your love every single day. day. Amen. 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 Off to class. <laughs> Would you stand as you're able, please, and turn to hymn number 42. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Hymn number 42. Please be 
seated. Before we offer our morning prayer, let us take a minute to celebrate the wider church. Today we lift up Peace Congregational Church in Clemson, South Carolina. When three teenagers uh, approached their pastor about starting a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and queer youth group, they never imagined that their idea would grow to provide a safe, interfaith space for youth in upstate South Carolina. Named PRISM, the program today helps teens deal with the tough issues of homelessness, mental illness, drug abuse, self-destructive behaviors, and lack of parental support. And now will you pray with me? God of forgiveness, holy presence of healing and love, help us to be ever thankful and mindful of all that you have given to us each and every day. We are acutely aware that there are those whose lives are in such peril that they are unable to see the beauty in others. We know there are oppressors, abusers, and war in many parts of the world. We see the brokenness around us of disease, loneliness, and addictions. Help us, God, to turn our faces towards you to heal instead of hurt, to love instead of neglecting. Guide the leaders of the world that they would be able to look past their own narrowness in order to embrace all people with love. Hear us this morning as we quietly name those for whom we have a concern or those with whom we celebrate. As we leave this place today, Creator God, fill us with the Holy Spirit that we may go with renewed hope and trust in your loving care. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Here ends the reading, and may God bless it to our understanding. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, May these words and the expressions of our hearts be received in the humble nature in which they are expressed. Amen. The reading today from 2 Corinthians speaks about exalting others, boasting about the goodness in our fellow man. Everybody likes to get praise for what they do or who they are, 
don't you? Good job, well done, bravo! All music to our ears. But why is it that sometimes we struggle to give kudos to others? What prevents us from being abundant with our praise and exaltation of others? For me, it typically is due to one big hiccup I deal with in my daily life. Fear. Isn't it fear that prevents us from being the gracious giver of praise? Fear that we don't live up to the standard of our brother? Fear that if we speak of all the greatness of our fellow man that somehow it makes us less? I know in my mind that this is just plain foolishness, but in my heart, I am weak, and I need God's grace to free me from my ego. I don't know about all of you, but my weaknesses are something that I've always tried to hide, to cover up, certainly not something to shine the light of day on, but what exactly is required of us in order to be free from this bondage? The teachings in the liturgy this morning state that our weaknesses allow God to come in and provide strength. Yet exposing our weaknesses makes us vulnerable. And who likes to feel vulnerable? But that is exactly what God asks of us, to make ourselves humble and vulnerable to the material world so that we can become more dependent on the spiritual world more dependent on God, the source of all of our strength. For in God there is no vulnerability. There is only making ourselves right-sized so we can accept His grace, His guidance, His wisdom. Most of you have learned over the years that the only way to learn patience is to go through personal trials and tribulations. The way to strength is through the challenge, the difficulty. And the victory of coming out on the other side, all the better for that experience. Our experiences with these challenges are what help us to have empathy for others as they struggle. Without our own experiences of loss, how can we truly appreciate the loss of others? Without ever being hungry, whether for bread, clothing, shelter, or even a direction in life, how can we ever know what it's like to ache from lack? Oftentimes I pray for the better life, but what I'm really asking for is one that's easy, comfortable, full of joy and peace. But without difficulty, what relevance would ease have for us? With nothing to contrast the difficulty, the joy would be less intense. Without pain, would we truly appreciate the comfort without chaos? Would we understand peace? In the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, the author states, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. You know, I have to be honest with you, when I first read that, my thought was, wow, that's a bigger man than I. I grew up in an environment where men don't cry. Weaknesses was not, weakness was not tolerated. If things got hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and tough it out. Who said life was going to be easy? But crying isn't a sign of weakness, but rather an expression of being in touch with your heart. For too long I poured drugs and alcohol into my body to distance myself from my heart, but no longer. I like that I'm in touch with my heart. That is where I meet others on the road of happy destiny, whether they're trudging along or frolicking. According to Wikipedia, to pull oneself up by one's bootstraps is to begin an enterprise or recover from a setback without any outside help. To succeed only on one's own efforts and abilities. Friends, I don't want to go it alone anymore. I need outside help. Sometimes that comes in the form of a mentor, a teacher, a friend, a colleague, or even a stranger. But more often than not, the need that I help, the need, the help that I need, let's try that again, <laughs> is that of God. To rely on God's strength and His guidance. 
to set aside my fear and walk through any challenge in faith. That is the reliance that I want to have. Not a reliance of this world, but a reliance out of this world. One of my favorite passages from a book I know well states that to rely on human beings for security is foolish. Humans are fallible. Only God can provide the comfort and security for when the road becomes bumpy and full of obstacles. Trust in Him and you will always be served well. In my own experience, I've had to learn how to drop the facade of being tough, of being right, of being strong and that I know it all. When I allow others to see the real me, when I remove the mask of pretension, showing all of my bumps and bruises and errors and frustrations, then and only then does it allow people to meet me in that difficulty. Everyone has difficulties. They may look different on the outside, but that's not where God looks. God doesn't see the outside. He sees us on the inside, right where we meet others, to be with one another. By tearing down the walls and allowing God inside of me to shine through, I give others permission to do so as well. Now, I'm a work in progress. Nowhere can I scan the light of truth and find that I'm living up to the ideals of which I speak. But the blessings I recognize today are thanks to the awareness of who I really am. By gaining awareness, we all have the opportunity to make a choice. We can choose to address the deficiencies, embrace our weaknesses. Accepting each and every part of ourselves is the key to loving ourselves and therefore allowing others to love us just as we are. One of my favorite daily readings that I stumbled upon recently is called The Daily Love. It's a blog and the author Mastin put it so well recently. We become successful admitting we are not perfect rather than trying to be perfect and thinking we're not enough. When we admit this and admit our fears, doubts, and insecurities, we connect with that part that resides in all humans. We know we are a work in progress, so of course we're going to feel like a fraud if we try to project some form or version of perfection. <clears throat> the truth is, we're perfectly imperfect. And admitting this, talking about our fears, insecurities, and doubts, and then also talking about what we are creating and stepping into that and talking about our desires, that is what creates connection between people. The Gospel reading this morning has Jesus instructing his disciples to go out and take nothing with them but literally the clothes on their back. We saw that so adeptly demonstrated by Pastor Judy this morning during the children's moment. But isn't that hard to do? Trust that everything we need we already have inside of us. No need for external comforts. Just the trust in God that He will provide everything that we need along the path. We all enjoy the comforts of life, whether it's a cozy place to call home, the opportunity to travel to exotic faraway places, or as simple as the cool air that makes the sermon today a little more bearable to listen to as the temperatures outside <laughs> swelter in the triple digits. Comforts are a good thing but not the main thing. When I think of those that went without comforts, at least those that we in Western society would consider as such, Mother Teresa comes to mind. Undying in her service to others, not wanting or needing of anything in return, knowing that her love for God and caring for all, I said it, all of God's children is what she needed to do or the servicemen and women who fight to defend the freedom we enjoy in this country and celebrate it quite recently. Some of whom day in, day out, 120 degree weather, 70 pound supply sacks on their back, imminent danger around any corner. It makes you stop in your tracks when you start to complain about how hot the car is when you first get in and the seemingly infinite amount of time it takes to cool it down. What does it take? 30 seconds? A whole minute? 
two minutes? When you leave here today, take a look around when you start to drive down the street and see those without vehicles waiting at those bus stops, at the light rail station, or walking. What they wouldn't give to be able to have a car that is sweltering to get into, only to cool down a few minutes later. There are times in life when we all feel like we don't have enough or don't feel like we, we have what we need to make it through whatever challenge that we're facing. If only I could get that job. If only they would love me back. If only this pain would go away. But it is not for us to determine when and where we will be relieved of that which we see as a burden. God and God alone determines what we need to experience to be of the most use to Him in service to others. How often have you desperately wanted something to happen and when it didn't you were gravely disappointed only to realize later that God had so much more in store for you. Sure, it's easy to say the words and have the faith when not mired in the middle of a challenging situation, feeling the immediate effects of a fresh wound of defeat, but that is exactly when God asks you to have the most trust in Him. That is why we practice our faith when times are good giving credit where the credit is due, spending time in prayer and meditation, that quiet communion with God, the one of our understanding, each and every day, making it a priority. I've heard it put this way before. Every time we spend time with God, we make a small deposit into our spiritual bank account. For some day, we may need to make a huge withdrawal. How often have you watched someone in amazement as they walk through a seemingly impossible task in life? The death of a child, a fatal diagnosis, the loss of a home or job, financial ruin. With their head held high and a seemingly unwavering faith, what we witness is that huge withdrawal. What we don't see are the daily deposits that made it possible. I'd like to close today with a reading from the book A Return to Love by Marianne Williamson, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, ironically. She writes, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond our measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant? Gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Amen. Would you please stand as you're able and turn to hymn number 495. We'll sing all four verses. Hymn number 495. Called as partners in Christ's service, called to ministries of grace, we respond with deep commitment, fresh new lines of faith to trace. May we learn the art of sharing, side by side and friend with friend. May we all partners in our caring to fulfill God's chosen end. Christ inspiring, Christ's clear call to wood and worth. Let us 
swallow, never faltering, reconciling the gone earth. Men and women, richer, poorer, all God's people, young and old, blending human skills together, gracious gifts from God on new patterns for Christ's mission in a small or global sense. Help us bear each other's burdens, breaking down each wall or fence. Words of comfort, words of vision, words of challenge said with care. Bring new Strength for action, make us colleagues, praise and fair. So God grant us for tomorrow ways to order human life that surround each person's sorrow with a calm that conquers strife. Make us Messengers of faith us giving hope and confidence and peace. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Learning to love ourselves is perhaps one of the hardest things that we have to do. But in order to love God and serve our neighbors, we need to begin by loving ourselves. Today we ask that you consider a, an offering in the service of others and as a demonstration of your commitment to Christ. Ushers. Regardless of whatever God gives us in life or life brings to us, God will be there to walk beside us or to carry us.
take your part Oh, when times get rough And pain is all around Like a bridge over troubled water I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay me down. Sail on, silver girl, sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your dreams are on their way. See how they shine. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right beside, like a bridge over troubled water. humble offerings that we may use them to spread your message of love and service with the strength you provide in our daily lives. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 395 and we'll, uh, in Christ there is no East or West. We'll sing verses 1 through 3. is done. <laughs>
And we, we particularly this morning thank Greg Brown for being our substitute organist. Randall's on vacation, presumably somewhere cooler than here. <laughs> and following this service, uh, we will be offering uh, communion. If you would like to receive communion, you may come forward. Uh, the, the elements were con consecrated at a previous service. Everyone, everyone is welcome at the table of Jesus Christ. Everyone may, may receive communion if you wish. And now, as you go forward into the week, hot and sweaty, <laughs> but loving and giving, may the love of God lift your feet, may the courage of Christ Jesus sustain your heart, and may the Holy Spirit fill you with energy of love for others. Go in peace, friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace to you all. Amen. Amen.